So Bob, let's talk gear. All right. Let's talk a little bit. So first, tell us about this Strat. It, it looks like it needs a refin or it something. It does need a refin if you know anybody. Yeah. I'm kind of thinking green. Yeah. A, a, a nice lime green. Yes. <laughs> lime green is the color of the for my the cancer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a 56 Strat. Uh, which I got in 1985. Um, Where'd you pick it up at? I was playing with Leon. I was going to his house. or I may have still been living at his house. And I got up and went to have breakfast somewhere at a restaurant. And I thought, well, I'm going to stop and get a newspaper. And this is in Hendersonville. And pulled up the grocery store, and there's the Nashville newspaper rack. And got one of those, and there's a little Gallatin newspaper rack. And I thought, mm -hmm. kicks, I'll grab that. So I grabbed those, and I go into... Po folks, yes, and uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm sitting there looking, looking through the Gallatin paper, and I get to the one ads, and I see musical instruments, and it says 1956 Stratocaster, sixteen hundred dollars, and I got up and went to the phone, the pay phone, and dialed it. He said, "Yeah, come over after you eat." So. Yeah. I did, and uh, he also had a 50s Les Paul, gold, gold top Les Paul. But I've never been, a, I was never really a Gibson guy. I've always been a Fender yeah. guy. Yeah. I mean, I play Gibsons. I have a 345 I like, and I have a gold top with P90s that I like. Yeah. Uh, and I've had regular Les Pauls. But uh, So I said, yeah, God, I love it. I said, man, could I take it? And play it through my rig. I said, Leon's got a warehouse out here. So you can come with me. He goes, no, just take it. <laughs> uh, and I said, he wanted $1,600. And I said, oh, man, I, I can give you $800. I can give you the other eight in a couple of weeks. So, yeah. you know. And he said, yeah, sure. It, I said, no, just pick it up then. He says, no, just take it. So for half down. So for half down. Yes, eight hundred dollars. And another eight hundred dollars later, <laughs> I took this home, yeah. and uh, one of the pickups was maybe not working. And okay. I took it to Tom Holmes, right? The the pickup winder, yeah. builder, yeah. And he rewound that pickup, uh, and. Uh, he also gave me, along with this guitar, a whole other set of 54 pickups. Okay. And he got this guitar from, uh, he was a, he, he worked with Leo way back in the day. Was it Bill Carson? Bill Carson. Oh my goodness. So Bill had, he got this guitar from Bill. Okay. And the story that he got from Bill was this was one of the guitars that Jimi Hendrix borrowed and played when he was stationed here. Okay. Um, no way to document yeah. that, but, you know, I thought it was an interesting thing. That's, that's a lot of provenance, <clears throat> you know, when you have a guitar that, you know, came from 
uh, Bill Carson, one of the guys that you know was uh, you know one of the the test pilots for right. the, for the Strat. Yeah. And then you have the fact that you know Clapton's played it, and yeah. and and perhaps Jimi Hendrix played it, and you, and it's been your main you know guitar for yeah. uh, you know, most of your career. Yeah. And yeah. Clapton played it. I think we talked about that. Uh, yeah. At Trancus, and so I had him sign it. Yep. And uh, right here, it said to Bob with all my heart, and but that's since been covered up with By, with Keith uh, Richards. Keith. Yeah. Who just signed over top of it. Yeah. So, just you know, some of the fifty-five you know characteristics are: this has a V-shaped neck, it yeah. has very much a spine to it. Yeah. Uh, if you know, of course, you've got the two-color sunburst. Mm -hmm. uh, flip it over, and uh, we see you know bakelite covers. Yes. And so these these covers are are quite you know as you can tell they're they're thin and they kind of have a different coloring to them and they. Uh, they kind of wear through. They you know, wear quickly. through. They're fragile. I have yeah. this piece of tape here because I don't really do it anymore. But I used to when I played with Leon. I played pretty hard. Yeah. And, you know, because all of this is me. Okay. That wasn't there. Uh, yeah. You know, I remember certain nicks where they came from, uh, but. With the cover being like that, the string would sometimes get stuck in there. And it would stick under yeah. there. Yeah. So, yeah. And just trying to protect it. And, yeah. You know, but it's a it's been a great guitar and I, and I on strats I always put these uh, it's like a, yeah it's like telly yeah I just I just like them better it's easier to do that with yeah, I put a five way switch in it uh, I've had it's been refretted two or three times a new nut I replaced the tuners I still have all the original stuff you know but yeah. just to make it more usable. With this guitar, you mentioned you know earlier. There's a uh, there's a pawn shop here in Nashville, and it goes by the name Vince Gill. Yes. Okay. It's and a, he, it's a great service. It, it is, and so I've heard from a number of players here in town that when they've hit rough spots, mm -hmm. that uh, they can uh, take their guitar and they will negotiate a price that he purchases the guitar, and then that guitar player. They can purchase it back at the same price, yes. even if the guitar goes up in value. And, and you were telling me that you uh, partook of these services. I did partake of his pawn shop service. Yes. And uh, <laughs> he had it there. You know, I, I've known Vince for a long time because my brother yeah. Tom's played with him for 15 years. Right. And uh, so, yeah, I took it over there and he said, yeah, you know, I said, yeah. well, do you want to, is this something you want to get back? Yeah. And I said, yeah. He said, "Well, then let's make the price reasonable." Yeah, and uh, say, then that's a determining factor. If you if I said no, yeah, he would have given me more money. More money. Yeah, but uh, so we kept the price at a reasonable price, and yeah. then I got it back a couple of years ago, I guess. Yeah, uh, and you know, and the he said, you know, your family is if you need it, just come and get it. Yeah. You know, if you need to use it for something, uh, yeah, you just come take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's such a sweet man. Yeah. 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 So uh, tell, us, tell us about the next guitar. Uh, this one is uh, a 63 Strat that I've had probably longer than any guitar. Um, I think originally my brother owned this guitar, and then okay. John Cowan had it for a little bit, and then I got it. And uh, it's had quite a few modifications. It has done had to it. a few, <laughs> <laughs> and mostly me. It was stripped. It was already stripped. Okay. And I think that was a. I don't know. Sometimes when a guitar is stripped, it's kind of a doorway to modifications because you, you feel like you feel more comfortable doing other things. Well, too. this is back in the seventies. Yeah. So, we didn't know. They're just guitars. Yeah. They're not collector's items. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've routed out uh, this whole middle section. Yeah. That's all so you got a, chiseled out. Yeah. Didn't route, route I didn't yeah. have a router. I used a you chisel. Just, yeah. <laughs> so, you did a swimming pool route underneath <clears throat> yes. the, underneath the yes. pit guard. There's an Olympic pool under here. Yes. <laughs> uh, and I put... Uh, the old Floyd Rose on, nice. and the locking nut, it had a Floyd Rose, and then I switched it at some point to this Kaler, which is an easier, just flip up and f flip right. back. Uh, these are patent sticker uh, humbuckers, mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, it's a cool guitar. I think it was probably Sunburst because you can see in there a little. Yeah, little, you can see a little red, red in yellow there. and red. Yeah. Yeah, and over here there's some more red. Yeah. So, so what does this guitar get used for more? <clears throat> yeah. It doesn't get used a whole lot anymore, unfortunately. I've, you know, you go through phases with guitars that you mm -hmm. like. You know, there was, I used it a lot on sessions uh, when I was doing s sessions. I don't do a lot of sessions anymore. Uh, it's a cool guitar for, you know, having this, which I don't like on that Strat. That's locked down. Yeah. I don't. I don't ever put the bar on that guitar. Uh, you know, I have this that I use for this. I have a. I've had Gretsch's, but I have a Yamaha AES fifteen hundred. Yeah. That, that I put Tom Holmes, not Tom Holmes, uh, TV Jones. TV Jones. Uh, Filtertrons in, in place of those P one hundreds, and it has a Bigsby. So those are the two. These are the two guitars I use if I need. If you need a little whammy bar yeah, action. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's a it's a really great guitar, great sounding guitar. Like I said, I've had this for longer than any other guitar. Yeah. Uh, it's a '63. I have another '63 uh, that a cousin of mine gave me, and I use it for slide. Okay. I keep flat wounds on it. Yeah. Um, Is that the blue one? That the you blue got? one. Yeah. yeah. And it has like a Jaguar. Yeah. He uh, at some point. That's weird. It's got Jaguar switches in there, which yeah. I. Disconnected all of it's hooked up. But yeah, it's just <laughs> Who knows <laughs> you know? You know, and it's yeah. not an original blue color. I think it, okay. it, was, it was painted Okay with some you know auto paint at yeah. some point, but it's a really cool guitar Yeah, and then another guitar that you didn't bring that you, you were talking about earlier mm -hmm. was uh, you have a, a Danocaster I have a Danocaster that I absolutely love so this is a, a Telecaster style it's a guitar. Telecaster so you know, I've had Telecasters, but I've never found that Telecaster that I love. Mm -hmm. And I played, uh, I've been aware of his stuff. And then uh, Dan Baird is a friend of mine. He's the, the, you know, the Georgia, Georgia Satellites Satellite. guy. And uh, I saw him one night and he had that guitar. He had Dan make him a guitar. Because his, he has like a 50, I don't know what year it is. Uh, it's a mid-50s mid yeah. yeah. Uh, but he sweats so much that he eventually sweated through the body, and he mm -hmm. his pickup would short out. He couldn't mm -hmm. play it anymore. Uh, <laughs> so he had Dan make him a guitar, and I played that thing, and I went, this is unbelievable. Yeah. So I went, called Dan, and then I went and met with him and talked to him, and you know, what do you want? I said, I just like a 50s, you know, like a 56-ish telly. And he has a real 56 telly. Mm -hmm. And I played that and I said, yeah, this, you know, great. You know, yeah. he didn't, he had a Strat that he had just finished there. And, you know, he doesn't really have any guitars around because he, as soon as he can make them, they're gone. Yeah. Um, and, uh, but he does phenomenal work. It's crazy how good this guitar is. Yeah. Uh, I, I, it's really become a main guitar now, live. Uh, really? And, Even more than the Strat? Yeah, I don't take that out. On the okay. Road. I don't trust myself. Yeah. You know, I've left it at a loading dock before. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah. So when you're out on the road, you take the the Danacaster, and, and do you have what other? I take the Danacaster, and then uh, Fender Custom Shop made me a Strat back in '99. I went there. And I took that with, with me, and they were all, oh, man, that's awesome. Do you, you want us to copy it? And I said, yeah. well, yeah, sure. I said, well, that'll, it, it'll take us three weeks. Well, I need it in two days yeah. or three days. <laughs> so that was like the Dixie Chicks fly tour or something that yeah. we were getting ready for. And uh, he, uh, Cruz, maybe? John oh. Cruz yeah. is one of the builders. Yeah, he... Uh, he, he built the one that I have, and he took it. Uh, so we just, he said, well, let's just walk around and find a body you like. Yeah. So I found a body, the lightest weight body I could find. It's a three-tone sunburst, but it has a maple neck. So it's kind of a... Kind of like a 59. Yeah. 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 I guess it would be an early 59, yeah. uh, because 59s then were rosewood. Yeah, later first, 59. Yeah. yeah, it's a transition year. Uh, 
And it was interesting, I watched them. Uh, well, no, I didn't watch them do it, but I watched the process that the, that the, those guitars go through, you know, yeah. to, to the way they beat them up and mm -hmm. make the finish cracks and stuff. And, yeah. uh, and he had a neck in his rack that he had made. And he had a few, and he said, well, do any of these feel good to you? I said, oh, man, that feels really nice. But it was a highly figured maple, mm -hmm. and it wasn't stable. Yeah. Uh, so I had, we'd have to adjust that neck once a week. Mm -hmm. And called him up and, and said, man, can you make me another neck? He said, yeah, I'll, I'll find the plainest, oldest, hardest piece of maple here and make you one, and it won't budge. Yeah. And it's, it's a really great guitar, too. Yeah. So that's the guitar you played with the Dixie Chicks most of the time, the yeah. custom shop one, not yeah. the 55? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't, no, that didn't go, it's, I didn't, that didn't go out on the road anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Unless it's like an overnight trip, yeah. and I can, I'm going to have it. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to take that chance again. I yeah. mean, that's kind of stupid, but I don't know. As long as you're still able to enjoy them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I still, you know, I probably don't, I don't play it as much as I should anymore, yeah. or, or this one either. But uh, yeah. I play them at the house, and you know, I have a little studio at the house, and I do stuff there, and yeah. they get used for that. And if I'm playing in town, I'll yeah. take it, you know, yeah. and use it. Show us the Dan Electro or Silvertone. The Dana, whatever it is. Oh, sorry. Uh, Glodeen. Glow Dean. I named her. She didn't have a name. Uh, yeah. I got this at Tuscola Music. Okay. Year, Nolensville Road. Yeah. Years, years ago. Here in Nashville? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, went in there, and this was hanging on the wall, and this pickup didn't work. Um, it just wasn't wired right. Mm -hmm. So the pickup was fine. pickup was fine. Yeah. yeah it didn't have... The rosewood here, it had a piece of wire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I took it to Jerry Jones. Jerry Jones used to work on my guitars. Right, because he was a repairman before he got into the right. guitar, uh, guitar building business. Yes, yeah. um, and he's refretted that. And yeah. So he made me a, one of these. And uh, so, and Glazer, looking at it, He's, I don't know. He said it's a 50, 50 whatever. Yeah. He, he, he knew. And it was painted like this. The paint is just amazing. Uh, <laughs> even the back looks like leather. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, I'm Because yeah. I mean, the, the, the instrument has been completely refinished. Well, I'm I mean, thinking well, that maybe been. this might have been the original. Copper. Copper. Yeah. And then they just did that. Uh, I thought it needed a name, and I don't know where I, Glodine just came to me. And then years later, I found out that's Barry White's wife's name. Oh. Which is kind of okay. bizarre. He said it's uh, groovy. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, a, it's a really cool sounding guitar. And, you know, I, Joe's been over this one too, you know, plucked it. And it's, it sounds great. It, most of my guitars are getting in need of some love, but yeah. yeah. Bob, let's talk about your pedal board here. Okay. So, uh, so what, what you got on here? Just some pedals. Just some pedals. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it looks like your guitar goes straight into a Boss EQ pedal. What do you use the EQ pedal for? I use it, uh, well, on this board. This is a board that I just put together probably a month ago, and I just put it together for being a live 
board, mm -hmm. little small thing. It fits in an old anvil briefcase. Uh, and uh, mostly on my boards, I've usually hit a compressor at the front end, but I'd, generally I just use that as a boost, and that's kind of what I use this as more okay. than anything. I just, okay. just bump it up a little bit. And so do you leave it on, or do you no. just turn it on for solos? You I know? usually will just hit it if I'm wanting a little more. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's, all, that's basically what that is used for. Now, on other boards, session boards, I obviously use it for tone shaping and, you know, if you, you can, you can do a lot with an EQ. Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can do a lot of weird stuff. Yeah. Make, make things really small, make things yeah. really honky or big, you know, whatever you need to fit in the, the yeah. track. So next in line looks like it's a RC booster. It's RC booster, probably my, maybe my desert island pedal, you know. Okay, There's, why? Just, I don't know, it just does a thing. It just, to me, it just goes like that. Yeah. It just makes things a little, a little bigger. Yeah. And I, I use it uh, for a little, it's a little hair yeah, on the, you know, a little overdrive. And, it, and it's also great, like I have another little board, like if I have to fly somewhere, mm -hmm. it just has four pedals on it. And that's the last one. And the okay. reason for that is if I'm doing a fly gig, you don't know what, you know. Okay. You don't know what backline is gonna be. What backline is gonna be, if it's worth a crap. And yeah. if, it's, if you're gonna get a twin, you know, hopefully not. Yeah. Uh, but I have, and so then it's my master volume, you know, which is, you can turn this, that gain up, and have that much, which yeah. just sounds like an amp, where it's starting to break up and get a little hair on it. And yeah. So this, there's always one of these on yeah. every board I have. So on, on, on this board, would you leave it on all the time, or would you? you it's kind of... on most of the time, yeah, okay. uh, unless, I'm doing something that really needs to be clean. Okay. Uh, and then I might leave it on and just back that gain out. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's just something about it I really like. And, and you know, to also having the bass and treble controls are great. More, more than anything, the bass for me, because depending on what I'm playing through. You can dial it back. I can dial it back. Like this amp has a lot of low end, and I yeah. usually dial it back a little bit. So is the, uh, the, the carbon copy next or the Mostortion? What's next in line? Oh, hell, I don't know. Uh. <laughs> okay. Oh, the tuner. Okay. So you got the poly tuner, which, which yeah. uh, magically tunes the guitar. It does, magically. It, it does it for you. Keeps you in tune. Then it goes yeah. to here, which is a Mostortion that's been rehoused. Okay. We, yeah. This, this is a, a popular pedal. So uh, It has become a popular pedal, yeah. yes. And so I think uh, uh, we've traced the, uh, uh, the lineage back to uh, uh, Leroy Parnell. So Leroy is where I learned about it. Yeah. Uh, he he showed them to me, and then I've been using them for years and years and years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when did you learn about it from uh, from Leroy? The early '90s. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. And then uh, this has been rehoused by uh, Justin Butler. Who Justin has, Butler uh, through tone effects. I think he does uh, er, uh, volume pedal modifications. So. Yeah. I just, I had this done because anybody who's had these pedals knows that they're persnickety. Uh, they're, the, the weak point is the switch. The switch, the is, the switch. May, is the main beef because yeah. you'll hit it and it might come on might. or it might, it'll come on and, and instantly go back off Yeah. or vice versa. It's on and you want to turn it off and it'll yeah. go off and back on. They're horrible yeah. uh, and there's no way to fix them. Uh, the, it also has circuit board jacks which you know that's yeah. never a good idea but yeah. they, so those because if the if wonky. it gets stepped on or something when the when the when the jacks are mounted to the uh, the circuit board it's yeah. uh, it's problematic you'll get broken solder yeah. connections and yeah. cold solder joints whatever and uh, but he rehouses them 
puts new, all new pots and, you know, and a real true bypass switch that works. Yeah. It's good when things work. <laughs> yes, it's good when things work when you're under when you're on the yeah. gig, and then uh, and then it looks like it goes into this car carbon cup delay. I don't know why it's there. I just use that for a short delay. Okay. And I use the Strymon for a long delay. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. I've usually just had one delay on every board I've mm -hmm. ever done, you know. But I thought I'd try two on this one. So and do you uh, use So that I a use lot? this as a yeah, I use it on, you know, stuff that needs a... Quick you know, slap back. Yeah. That, that stuff. Or, you know... Uh, uh, you want that. Yeah. And I don't have to sit and try and go... Yeah. And thrrr, I can't tap that fast to yeah. get that. Yeah, it's hard to get that, yeah. And also depending on how many repeats you want, which usually you want more repeats on a longer delay. Right, so. yeah. And then so, it goes to this guy, yeah. which is the long delay, which is, it's a really cool pedal, yeah. great sound. I like tape sound, and I like analog sound and stuff, you know, that's why yeah. that's, you know. Carbon copy is a really good sound and delay. This is a great sound and delay. Yeah, um, and then, then you got the flint with the tremolo and reverb. Tremolo and reverb, which, yeah. uh, out live with Delbert, I just play through two pro juniors. They have no reverb or tremolo. Right. So, traditionally through the years, I've I've never used reverb. I'm not a big reverb fan. Haven't mm -hmm. been. But I've recently started to go ahead and accept it and lean into it a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> on stuff. You know, for uh, you know some of. Uh, uh, kind of nice for blues. Yeah. You know, and a lot of Delbert stuff, is it really needs that. So. Yeah, and, I mean, it was a big part of the, the blues, you know, arsenal was, was amp reverb, Fender oh, yeah. amp reverb. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk briefly about uh, what kind of strings do you use? Deodario. Yeah. I've been a Deodario guy for years. Uh, we should we should uh, put a shout out to Tom Spaulding. Tom Spaulding, fabulous, yeah. fabulous man, good good friend, longtime friend of mine. He's he, we've uh, I don't know when we met. He was guitar tech on a couple of gigs with me, uh, yeah. and uh, just a great guy. Yeah, looks like you have a personalized guitar pick. I do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> years and years ago, back I think back when I played with Leon, probably mm -hmm. from the eighties. Uh, the Bob Britt pick, and nice. I, I was in uh, Guitar Center on in Hollywood. Dave Weiderman, guy out there, mm -hmm. great guy. He wanted my pick, so I gave him one. Yeah. He put it next to Keith's pick. Oh. <laughs> And there's a big <laughs> display from class. Yes, yes. All right. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, yeah. It says Keefe. Yes. It says yeah. Keefe. Yeah. And uh, like 10 through 46? 10 what? to 46. Okay. Um, on the uh, fenders, uh, this probably has 11s. All okay. right. Uh, there was a while I used 10 and a halfs okay. on Les Pauls. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bigsby. Yamaha I use 11 song, yeah. um, but 1046. And yeah. I've recently started using the, not recently, a couple, when they came out, the NYXLs. Yeah. Which are phenomenal because they don't break and they stay in tune. Mm -hmm. And on a live gig, it's awesome. I mean, if I do a fly gig, I only take one guitar. I don't, I don't worry about breaking a string anymore. Wow. And uh, I just take one guitar. Uh, but uh, I love just the regular XLs, too. Mm -hmm. They're, it's interesting because I've had been playing NYXLs for the past couple of years. And, and I don't know, last week I threw a regular set of XLs. There, I was changing strings on that mm -hmm. Danacaster because uh, I was going to play it on something that I was recording. And I threw those on there and I went, wow. They feel those are great too. They're great too. They have a different. They're a little softer mm -hmm. feeling. 
The XLs or the NYXL? The XLs. Okay. The NYXLs also, to me, feel slightly like they're just a hair heavier, you okay. know, in the gauge. But then I've heard people say the opposite, that they feel lighter to them. So I don't, I don't know. Most people, Everybody, I think, they yeah. feel a little yeah. bit heavier, too. Yeah. And uh, you said, you know, with Delbert, you mainly use uh, Pro Juniors. Mm -hmm. uh, are they modified in any way, just uh, stock? or? I think I modded one of them. Yeah. Maybe put uh, a different speaker in it or something? Well, or? They ha yeah, they have different speakers in them. Yeah. I, I'm not even really sure what they are right now. Yeah. One of them has an old Celestion. Okay. Uh, which uh, I used to play through Supers. I had a couple of old blackface Supers. Yeah. Uh, and um, I had some old 50 watt Celestians, I think they were, or maybe they were, I don't know. I can't remember what the wattage was, but I, I have one of those in one of those amps, one of those Pro Juniors. The other one, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what's in it. <laughs> and today uh, you, you've brought a uh, 59 Tweed Deluxe. Yes. It's a pretty amazing amp. <laughs> yeah. Which I kind of fell into. I was playing with Pam Tillis and uh, opening act guy came up at, at Soundcheck and said, do you know anybody looking for any old Fender amps? I said, well, yeah, me. Yeah. See, well, I got a couple of Deluxes. He had this one and a brown one. And I played through it and just couldn't believe the sound. And yeah. uh, so I bought it for the whopping sum of $600 and some Pam Tilla swag. Yeah, so <laughs> 600 bucks and some t-shirts yes. and stuff. And, and you got a 59 Tweed Deluxe. Yeah. And uh, I, blew, I blew the speaker in it, uh, the Jensen. Uh, it's got a huge amount of low end and you know, just when you tap, if you do that, that speaker would just, yeah. it bottomed out. I had it reconed, it lasted a year before I did it again, so I just, I had a vintage 30, one of my old vintage 30s in it for a while, and then I, I don't know, five, six, eight years ago, I put in a Celestian Gold, and that's perfect for it. Fantastic. Me. Yeah. Well, Bob... Thank you so much for uh, for being on the True Tone Lounge. Oh man, thanks for having me. A true pleasure. I appreciate it. And guys, make sure and subscribe, and uh, so that you don't miss an episode. Thanks. <laughs>